Hey boys and girls, um, Corey and I are in Fremont, California, and we all know what that means, right? We're going to go and visit a battery plant. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, not that one. This one. Stay tuned. So we're going to start by doing anode fabrication. Okay. We're going to do this more or less in the order of the manufacturing process. Okay, great. Um, we're a small operation. Actually, we're doubling our footprint as we speak. Uh, and uh, we're occupying, or soon will be, the adjacent uh, facility. Ah, very good. So this is uh, our anode fabrication area, and um, directly ahead with oh, the hang name. Hang on a second. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. Directly ahead with the name Smith. Uh, this is the second of two roll-to-roll -roll systems. Uh, when we first ventured into production, uh, we went forward with a roll-to-roll -roll solution, and we're producing anode as we speak from these systems and this is what we're shipping uh, product uh, to our customers with. Okay, so what you're looking at is essentially a set of chambers uh, where we're growing the nanowire, nanowire yeah. one, nano two, that's a two-step process, and then it goes into the PECVD, which is when we do the amorphous silicon deposition, I see. and then finally the second CVD, which is that uh, very thin conformal uh, surface area reduction step. So, bare foil in, finished anode out. And then it's coiled uh, at the end, Correct. and then from there you take it to the... To the assembly to area. To the assembly area. Cool. So we have two of these. They're running 24-7, and this is what we're uh, using to uh, enable our current customers. Uh, so this and is... And this is yours. No, not, this is ours. Yeah. This is a, these are one of a kind. Yeah. And there are two of them. Actually, there's another one over there, and this is the second iteration of that. Well, again, I've seen lots of things. I never saw anything like this. That's <laughs> uh, kind so, of very So this is an example, as you said, of making your own equipment. Yeah, right. And what we learned from this is, is that that's fighting a war on a, on a separate front. And what we decided was, let's take somebody else's solution that is that's yeah. already proven in manufacturing right. and do an adaptation on it. And so, that's, uh, that's a clever way of making it happen. Um, I've never heard of Smith or SMIT. Who, who they're is? a Dutch company. They're based in the Netherlands. Ah. Um, and they're, they've got a long history in making uh, various furnaces and plasma systems. And this is the Centrotherm system that you saw in the slide deck. Let me just come around this side for a better view. Yeah. Uh, Oops, this hi. is uh, Dr. Brian Beatty. Hi, how are you? Uh, hi, nice, being nice to meet you, sir. Nice meeting you. He's yeah. manager of uh, process development, and he's going to walk you through what this does, how it does it, and give you some uh, sort of demonstration for, of it. Oh, great, because we're going to be sharing a microphone. So That's fantastic. Go. Well, thank Good. you very much, Sandy. We appreciate you. you guys taking the time to come visit us today. Right. Yeah, thank um, you. So again, this is uh, the test sample for our mass production pilot line. Uh, so yeah. here in Fremont, we're actively developing our products. We're trying to scale up our manufacturing. And this system is a big part of what's going to enable that. Um, we're moving to this furnace-based batch process. Um, and a big part of why we chose to do that enables huge throughput, uh, scalability, um, and a lot of other work that lets us really work faster, more effectively, more productively. Um, I think so Sensor Therm has been developing materials for the solar industry yeah. for decades now. Um, and this is the, the latest off their production line. Um, and a big part of why we chose to go with them is they are designing for manufacturability of commodity products. Their products have to be uniform, they have to be high deposition rate, they have to be huge throughput, same needs as us. Let's us not have to reinvent the wheel 
and leverage the learnings of an industry that has already gone through the scaling and the difficulties of that transition to mass production. So as we can see, we have a bunch of material. The tool kind of handles itself. It's wonderful because we can make sure that engineers and our technicians can load and operate and the system can manually or automatically process the system uh, completely on its own. And so material is loaded into the tubes and is processed. We get this huge deposition rate, which is a big part of how our anode really functions. We need to get a lot of our pure silicon onto our structures. So as we can see, a boat full of wafers or a boat full of foils, uh, as you can see in the, the loading chamber here, right. gets loaded into the tube automatically by the processing system. Uh, it'll go in there and it'll process for a certain amount of time in order to deposit whatever processing steps uh, is really required here. So we run everything from bare foil all the way through to finish anode can be done in one of these five chambers here on this one processing line. Anyway, I'm looking at uh, two different colors here as well. You can see the light gray for the ones that haven't been uh, uh, touched yet, I'm assuming, and then the dark when they come out of the, uh, out of the uh, chambers. So it's kind of like uh, a visual that some of, our, uh, some of our viewers would like to see. Absolutely. Excellente. Well, this is very good. Thank yeah. you so much. Very excited. We're yeah. happy to have you. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Well, I'm, I'm pretty excited myself. So, let's see what's next. Okay, so we get, uh, we get coupons from the roll that you just saw from the anode team, right? Yeah. So we, we, we're basically sampling them. Yeah. So you can see here, it's, I have a start and an and a end coupon that's labeled. So I get sections and uh, we, we take a top-down view and a cross-section view to see how it looks under the microscope. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a good idea of how the process has you know turned out so you're looking at density i'm assuming yes uh, and, and and also the nanowire dia diameters hmm. so you hmm. can see this is like a 100x view yeah i'm going to go so this is 250x so you can see you can get a good idea of how dense the nanowires have grown into and the uniformity and the, uni and the uniformity, uniformity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's what we get from a top-down view and then from a cross section, you can get the nanowire height and a good sense of how uh, spaced out they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what would determine uh, is it all visual, or is there some other metric that you use to determine whether or not uh, these samples are in in, uh, in, spec. in spec? In spec, it's yeah. mostly in this. In this quality check, it's mostly visual. Yeah. So I have like a current sample right there. That's a live sample. So th that 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 is loaded inside. Yeah. So if I turn that on, you're getting like only a uh, visual, but a you know a microscopic feedback of how it looks in this case. Yeah. I see, and uh, that's what's appearing here now. Yeah. 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 That's that's definitely a lot higher than. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, close to 5,000x. Yeah, 5, I'm just X. zooming in on just one nanowire from from a top-down view. So. Mm. so you can see that um, it is relatively rough, which is an indication of the fact that it's porous. Yeah. 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 I see the symmetrical rings. It it, it actually looks like a like a cross section of a tree trunk or something. So uh, uh, that, that, that's a good indication that it's grown, mm -hmm. as opposed to what we normally see, which doesn't look like that ever. So um, uh, this is a very, to me, this is hugely interesting. I'm, I'm really, uh, really impressed, really impressed. This is an automatic formation chamber. So the cells that we're making are uh, loaded between this uh, contact plates, and then they are automatically pressed. It's control environment here. Uh, so we're, uh, we're doing uh, about 128 cells at a time and that's, uh, that's on one machine. So this, mo most of these stations are individual machines. So this is a production system, albeit a small version of it, 
that's used in every battery manufacturer making pouch cells in the world today. Uh, in our expanded facility, we'll have many of these. And of course, in mass production, they'll be bigger. But essentially, it's the same function where you load the cell into these pockets, yeah, uh, into these slots. Uh, compression is applied and uh, they're connected electrically uh, and there's temperature applied. Hmm. And this is called formation. Yeah, so the first cycle of the cell is, is the formation and it's very important for the properties of the cell. So what, what is the yield rate on, on this, uh, uh, on, at, at this point? Like, how many uh, in, uh, in cell the... assembly is relatively high, over 90, 95 percent. Yeah. In, in that range, 90 to 95 yeah. percent cell assembly. The fallout here is mostly it doesn't seal well or perfectly, or there's a defect in one of the steps. So then you have to eliminate it. Um, also, at the end, we do quality control for every cell. We actually do a full cycle capacity check. So every cell is checked by capacity, by internal resistance, and then we have also a waiting period measuring the self-discharge rate. So that's also you know, within certain limits of acceptable range. Yeah, so this one uh, started also from uh, zero. You can see the first 30 minutes at 20, okay. about the 22. The temperature you can see is really going up. Now. Yeah, temperature is going up. So it's conditioning itself, basically. It's getting into the higher temperature, which allows it to f even faster charge. So now it jumped to 10C current, uh, about uh, 35 amp ampere. 10% in under one minute. Yeah, it's actually close to 15% in a minute. Yeah, this is uh, this is really quite interesting for me because um, these are not the kind of numbers I would normally expect to see in this amount of time. Like we're looking at uh, about one minute, and we got 17, uh, seven, almost 18 uh, percent charge. That that's hauling right along. Um, it's moved up to about uh, double what you'd find in a room temperature, um, but that's nothing extraordinary as far as i'm concerned this is kind of like like i say this is this is about as revolutionary as i've seen yeah taking a 27 ampere which is uh, about 100 watt yeah at this uh, charging power so now it's charging at maximum rate 10 c continuous constant current yeah, so it's pretty warm now. You can yeah, see it's, it's getting close getting to 50, 50 degrees. 50 degree. yeah. But this is pretty normal. It's not, uh, it's no, not it's a not high temperature. Extraordinary. No, it's not it's extraordinarily high. It's pretty normal temperature. Uh, and uh, it can be controlled in a car. It's, it's a normal temperature yeah. during yeah. charging. Yes. Yeah, yeah uh, again, to put things into perspective, it started off at 21, which is about 70 degrees, and uh, boiling point for water is 100 degrees. So you can see that you're basically uh, in between, as it were, um, uh, boiling and, uh, and room temperature. It's actually starting to drop in it's, temperature It should yeah, cool now down. It's, it's going down now, down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we haven't exceeded 55 degree, actually. Hmm but it's still amazingly fast as far as uh, charge is concerned. But we're gonna watch to 80, right? 80%, right? Yes. Take yes. it to 80. 90. We can wait to 90. It, it's going to be slower and slower. Yeah, but that's yeah. A, a... Yeah, 90 it should be in about seven minutes, eight, seven, I eight see. minutes. And then it starts to really slow down. Really slow down, yes. <clears throat> I think the, yeah. the last 10% 10 per, 10 takes almost as much know, time as, as, much the, as the, yeah. the other yeah. 80 or so. But overall, it's still very fast. Yeah, yeah. 15 so minutes to 100%. At the end of the day, um, I'm not much of a fan of, uh, of going to 100% no. ever. 
So um, if it gets to 90 in, would you say, eight minutes or something yes. like that? Yeah. Um, I would suggest that, that that would work for me. We might beat six minutes here. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, we will. 18, five. Oh, right <laughs> on the nut. <laughs> Did you plan this? <laughs> Somehow We've feeling... done a few of these, so it's fairly yeah, predictable. Uh, yeah, I mean, seconds plus minus, it's, it's hard to control, but yeah. around six minutes is what we say. Yeah. 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 It certainly hit the, hit the target. Well, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, we watched lots of different tests and whatnot. I haven't seen anything like this, and if this is kind of representative of, of a complete pack, um, this basically, uh, nobody's got anything like this. You should stop it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Yeah. Cool. Wow. I think that's the tour. That's the grand finale. Wow, that's the grand finale. <laughs> Stopped it at the right time. This is definitely. I'm. Uh, so I we should say, say that that cell is is about 370 watt hour per kilogram. 370 watt hours per kilogram. 370. That's a power cell. It's yeah. A power so that's cell. a power cell. Testing. Yeah, it's about yeah. That's like what 275 or 278, mm -hmm. something like that. I can't remember. Wow, amazing. That's really cool. That's really, really Im impressive. The 400 will charge about 80% in 15 minutes. So yeah. they, they don't have as much power capability, but still charge remarkably fast compared yeah. to graphite. Back yeah. to the conference room. So anyways, gentlemen, I, I would really like to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for an absolutely uh, wonderful uh, morning. This to me was um, as eye-opening as it gets. I see a future for the, uh, for the VTOL or actually um, electrified flight industry. Um, I, I can't begin to tell you how excited I am about your future. Uh, this is, uh, you guys have something that nobody else has. Um, you've got something that basically gives me twice as much uh, power as what anybody else can uh, 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 as far as uh, uh, gravimetric and um, and volumetric uh, standpoint, I'm, I'm totally blown away. I got a chance to watch the whole process. It looks like you've got it all locked in. I'm, like I say, a lot of times I figure I, I've wasted my time on some of these trips, but this definitely was an eye-opening experience. I can't thank you enough. And, um, and uh, Dr. Sung, do you, do you have anything you'd like to close off with? Yeah, Sandy, on behalf of our team here, uh, I really thank you and Corey taking time to visit us. I hope you leave here with the impression, first, Ampere has unmatched uh, battery performance in lithium ion battery industry. Secondly, we are ready to scale up. We have been delivering solid commercial products since 2018. Yeah. yeah. We certainly uh, keep you update. Welcome you come back again. <laughs> yes, well, actually, I'm hoping I will come back again. And, uh, and like I said, I'd like to bring some of your stuff uh, we have a booth at the uh, World Congress for the SAE, and I think that uh, I, I, I think it'd be a good idea if I kind of let other people know, because I never heard of you before. Um, you guys have uh, done a very good job of uh, keeping under the radar <laughs> as far as I was concerned. So I'm, I'm very impressed, and I think the rest of the world should know about it, about you as well. And um, so anyway, with that, let me close it out. Thank you very much for watching uh, Monroe Live, and thank you uh, all the people here at Ampress for giving us a, a marvelous uh, tour. It was well worth the flight out here to California. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you. Bye.